Hi, this is J.V. Crumb III. I'm the author of the book, Conscious Millionaire, Grow Your Business by Making a Difference. And I'm the host of the Conscious Millionaire Show. I'm the founder of the Conscious Millionaire Institute, where we work with six, seven, and eight-figure entrepreneurs that want to make a bigger impact and put more money in the bank. On this episode, I'm going to talk about my seven money mindset. Hello, fabulous person, Beata Shalet here, the Growth Architect. Welcome back to the Business Growth Architect Show, where we bring you cutting-edge business strategies from some of the world's most successful entrepreneurs, business transformation experts, and visionaries who want to help you to scale your impact. Look for one tangible strategy that you can take back and implement right away. And now back to our guest. Hello and welcome back. This is Beata Chalet, your host, the growth architect of the Business Growth Architect Show. Today is a dream come true for me. This is a guest that I have personally listened to for years and I have taken his course and I had a magical transformation when I did that, which I'll tell you all about it. And I have had it on my vision board as a goal to have him on my show. So here is, imagine the drum roll, JV from the third. <laughs> JV, I'm so excited for you to be here. Thank you for coming on the show. Well, no, you were just on my show and this is a wonderful experience. And I really appreciate you being at Mindset to Millions because you contributed so much. And, and it was, you know, what's wonderful, we're doing it again in November um, um, and, and August. So we're going to do it two more times this year. That was the first time, and you don't know how something's going to work, and it worked. And um, and but it can only work because you have the people there who play, right? Because this was very transformational, and very interactional, and if people hadn't played, it wouldn't work. You know, yes. so it's about attracting people who really want to up their consciousness, make more money, and impact the world. Yes, and I want to give a little bit more context on that, and um, just for full transparency. So what happened is that. JV and I connected and we, you know, we both love strategy. We like uh, consciousness. We like mindset. And so JV facilitated this event and I participated and I hadn't really planned to go as deep as I did for, <laughs> for full honesty, but I was so drawn into it. And then I had a massive, massive transformation myself where I felt that I had experienced something on a different level that even as somebody who does as much, much mindset as I do and who lives on this conscious level had not experienced. So one of the things I want to talk to you about, because this is a show about strategy, is that is this level of depth, in, and, and with you, it's almost like I want to call it beyond mindset, because it is beyond the regular set of mindset, if we're really honest. Is that a strategy? Yes, absolutely. Because um, it's not what I'm going to talk about today, but I have seven money mindsets. That's what the whole three day training was about. It's what my new book, Conscious Millionaire, Your Seven Money Mindsets is about. And one of those is very divinely spiritual, because it's, it's about your visionary money mindset and how you build vision. And when I'm talking about vision on the level that Elon Musk has vision, right, we all have that possibility within us, right? And that's where I think the future of entrepreneurship is headed, is only building businesses that have products and services, and I want to be very specific here, that have intrinsic value, not just marketed value. So, and, 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 if, and, and if I offend anyone, it's really quite fine. So, like if cigarettes or Coca-Cola or any soda that's filled with sugar, because I'm now reversing diabetes because I drink that stuff, Right. So I know personally, this does not have positive value. There's no intrinsic value. It's a marketed value to you. But what if we lived in a world where all the products and services that every company, every entrepreneur sold, no matter how large, how small, had intrinsic value that uplifted you and uplifted humanity? That's the world I have a vision for, is how do we build that world? That's what Conscious Millionaire is about, is that that's the future. And it's not that long away. I think in the next 10 to 20 years, most of what's on this planet and 20 to 30 at the longest that has negative impact will have dissipated. 
and people will have shifted to this new way of thinking where, well, how is it that we uplift each other, uplift the spirit, the consciousness of humanity, uplift the path that each human being is on so that they're expressing at their highest possible vibration, their highest possible place of love, you know, their highest possible place of collaboration and cooperation with one another to build a world where we all get to win, not just a small percentage of people win, but that that's everyday life. And I don't think this is centuries away. I think with the help of consciousness that's shifting technology and entrepreneurship, I think we're going there over the next 20, 30 years. And by the end of this decade, we're going to be like the metaverse, Web3, you know, we're going to be living a very different life. I, I, I agree that we are seeing a speed of development that I think our own mindset or our consciousness has to catch up to almost to a certain extent. I want to ask you a little bit of a provocative question before we go into, into more of the content is somebody who is critical about this kind of stuff and says, look, this is business. This is about strategy. It's a formula. We applying formulas. What is this thing about consciousness? What would you say to someone like that? Yeah, that, that's such a great question. And it's not an issue of whether we have, to me, I look at businesses, mindset, strategy, and execution. And I go, I don't care if it's a $10,000 business or a $10 billion business. That's all there is because tactics come under strategy. But let's think about conventional business and conscious business, because you're going to have strategies in both. You're going to have marketing in both. You're going to have sales in both. You're going to build teams in both, right? But a lot of it's about intention. In conventional business, which let's call that um, capitalism stage one. And this conscious business is capitalism stage two. So in stage one, it was only about a win-lose model. There are 100 pennies in a dollar. There are 100 marbles in the can, right? And your goal is to get all of them. That's actually your goal, which of course is nonsensical because it leaves you with no one to do business with. Uh, it's, your goal is to destroy. It's, it's a war game. Destroy your competition. This was the names of books that people would write, right? But over here, and it's ego-driven, and that ego uh, fallacy and that is part of the conventional world that most people are living in right now, here's the story that's not true. It's I'm not someone today, and if only I achieve X, X could be money, X could be whatever, right? I'll finally become somebody. And over here on the conscious side, of course, we have an ego. Ego is part of being a human being. But now we're, we're looking at how ego and higher consciousness, how are you want to define that, um, come together, integrate. It's not a balancing, it's an integration. How do they both coexist? And so on this side, on the conscious side, ego is about achieving outcomes, but we start the journey to achieving the new bigger mountain, already knowing we're somebody. Getting to that new mountaintop or achieving X doesn't make us any more somebody. All it does is it changes the level we can play. And by changing the level we can play, it changes who we can play with because people tend to play with people more or less at the same level. And it therefore changes the impact we can make with our lives because we get to play bigger. But that's a very different journey because it's all about how am I on this planet right now with a big purpose to make a big impact? And that's the central question. And then when you put it into a conscious millionaire and how do I arrange this big impact in a thing called a business and it makes money, right? That's the bringing the two of them together. But your driver isn't the money, no matter how much you're a numbers person like I am, the real driver is impact. The real driver is making positive change, uplifting humanity, shifting human beings' lives to a higher level. That's what's really driving you. And how do you do that in a way that makes money? That's called a business. 
but that's that, a conscious business. That's the new path. That is the new path. And I think that- and that's a strategy as well, right? It's a strategy of make an impact and put the business together in a way that brings money back. I like that. And I think it's important to point out that you are a lawyer by trade. <laughs> I am a lawyer. Right. So this isn't it, it's it, and, and yet you you do you very deep into spirituality and meditation. So you are almost like a paradox, which I think makes it so much sweeter because that makes it more true to me, because I, I know that you have seen all different sides of it and you examined all the different sides of, you know, what does it mean? You know, can I go be a hard charging lawyer or do I want to bring something else in what I provide? my clients with that goes way beyond the obvious. And, you know, that's what attracted me to, to your podcast years ago. And that's why I've been such a big fan. But then, you know, this is interesting because it's the second time this has come up today. <laughs> um, so when I was 25, I was the little poor kid from the country that became a millionaire and had the four story home and all the, the Mercedes and the traffics and the piano. And the piano, yes, a piano that I still own that was built in 1820. Broadwood built it, so it's um, over 200 years old. Uh, and they built two Beethoven pianos, which is interesting. Um, but it only took three months. And one day I was standing in my living room, looking out at the bay and seeing all the sailboats. And I had one of those energetic moments that everything melted down in a moment like one moment I was perfectly fine I was happy I was living in my new house I was going oh my god it's so beautiful and then the next moment this this energetic feeling came over me and, and it was that energy pulling going down right and I looked out and I said oh something's wrong with this picture and then I said oh I don't even like myself and I'm not good at relationships, just ask anybody I had a relationship with, all I figured out was how to make money. And I knew in like in less than 60 seconds, I knew, oh, I had this little boy dream. I bought into this belief, cultural belief system that if you just become the millionaire, that was that ego journey. If you just become the millionaire, now you're somebody and life is perfect. Well, I had a nicer house. I had a nicer car and I had some money in the bank. But actually nothing was perfect because the meaning and purpose of life was not yet resonant in how I expressed myself and, and who I was being in the world or how I was even making money. I wasn't even making money. It wasn't anything bad. I had a regional trucking line, but it wasn't anything conscious. It was like, oh, we, you know, we're moving feet around, you know, and that's fine, but I'm not sure anybody's life was really totally better off by anything that we did. And, um, and I went off on a journey that ultimately led to selling the companies because I knew I was, this was not my soul's journey. This is not why I was on this planet. And I went and lived at a Buddhist monastery. And then I lived at Esalen because I knew I had to take a deeper spiritual path to find the reason I was here. And that took another three years. Um, and and it came to me in a hot tub <laughs> in my in my forehead. I was reading uh, for this green festival, about a hundred page pamphlet. And I saw the word conscious and I get all this communication. Typically it's in my forehead, in my mind's eye. And conscious millionaire was written out and I saw it and I got a tingling in my spine. And I said, oh my gosh, that's it. That's why I'm here. You know, and I spent 40 minutes in the hot tub because I said, I know how the universe works. I don't need to like hop out of this. And I went over and I took consciousmillionaire.com and then being an attorney, I found my trademarks pretty quickly. And the rest is the journey, except that six months later, in a very similar kind of situation, I got Conscious World, which I filed trademarks on, didn't know what it was going to be. And I'm now building a global nonprofit to train youth to become conscious leaders all over the world to become our next level of leadership needs to be purely coming from a conscious place of asking questions like how do we all win how how do we solve problems in a way that's good for the planet and good for the human beings and good for the plants and good for the animals because we're all here taking a journey together 
The vision just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, certainly since I've been watching you and, and you've been very uh, outspoken and very open about your journey uh, via your podcast and what you've been talking about. So I want to shift gears now a little bit over to the strategy. You know, what what is sort of your favorite strategy? And I know that you've been working on a particular concept that um, I'm just going to ask you to share uh, the seven principles, if you wouldn't mind, because I think oh, that sure. our audience can take a lot away from this. Sure, absolutely. So um, I like to put together formulas. Most of them have three steps. This one has seven. So occasionally they have seven. And I was putting everything together for this mindset to millions and asking myself, well, I've got all these pieces and I know they belong there, but they didn't, um, they didn't form a whole. So I said, I've got to arrange them differently than how I have them arranged. And ultimately, I arranged them to these seven money mindsets and they start with abundance. And the thing is, I want to tell you is that most of what you have studied about mindset is right as far as it goes. But most of it only deals with abundance beliefs. And that's only one piece. We're going to deal with seven. And then if you, each one of them is related to all the other ones. So seven times seven, now you've got a 49 more powerful money mindset than if you just stay on the beliefs about abundance. But the belief about abundance is at one end of the continuum. And let's imagine you have tens and maybe even hundreds of thousands of beliefs, most of them unconscious. And every one of them is somewhere on a continuum between scarcity and lack at one end and limitless abundance, not just abundance, but it's limitless. And we need to really understand that this is exponential in its power. And every one of your beliefs is somewhere along that line. And all of them that are down here towards scarcity and lack stop you from being abundant. They stop you from receiving. They stop you from having big money goals or big money outcomes because you don't even believe those are part of your world. You know, you can talk about Elon Musk, who as the time of this recording is worth about $300 billion. And you can go, oh, oh yeah, all that makes sense for Elon. But somehow it's not part of your world. And, and I ask people, I go, is, is Elon really smarter than you? Is, is he that much smarter? I mean, is that even possible? So that's obviously not it. It's mindset factors. The second one is about identity. And we only achieve what fits into our identity. We only take actions. We only get visions. We only build strategies based on our own identity right now. So all the ways that we're not are ways that we're not going to put into strategies and execution because they don't seem like that's who we are. And this could be things from, oh, I'm not educated enough, or I grew up in the wrong family, um, or, you know, my, uh, my, my, it'd be way too hard for me to achieve that. You know, this isn't me. And yet, the truth is, the people who achieve the big things that really impact the world are no smarter and probably no more skilled than most people. They simply have a different identity. So then we have to work on shifting that identity. The third piece, and that relates back to Elon Musk, is possibility. Now, here's the truth. All of us are set up with two buckets inside. One bucket is all the things that we have consciously or unconsciously through our molding, through everything that's happened in our life. Oh, like These are impossible for us. And then we have this other bucket of things that are possible. And I go, you don't need a PhD in this stuff, folks. Look at your bank account. Look at your friends. Look at your clients. Look at your business. Look at how you're living. Look at the last vacation you took. Did you stay in the five-star hotel at the suite? Or were you like at the Comfort Inn because it was uh, cheaper, right? Nothing wrong with either one of those. But it says everything about what you think is possible. And so part of the job of at the... Uh, possibility money mindset is to start moving things from the impossible bucket into the possible bucket, because until they're possible for you in your mind, you are not going to take action and create a strategy because the, the relationship between the money mindsets and strategy is this. Most people 
when they're working on their business, they start with the external and they go, oh, well, what's the right marketing strategy or the right funnel strategy or the, you know, the right sales strategy, whatever it is. And how should I execute? That's all external until you up level your money mindsets, all seven of them, till you're up leveling those, you're going to create strategies that are at the same level. You may change the name and go, oh, I've changed my strategy. No, it's at the same level. It's going to produce the same level of results. You have to shift to shift your strategies to a new level. You know, and then the fourth one's visionary. What is your purpose? How do you align that with the impact for your business and the ways that you make money? And it's that alignment that creates that upward trajectory and then embracing that as part of your money mindset and integrating the conscious part of having a purpose and impact with the money part and bring them together. That's what that visionary money mindset is all about. And then you have not only possibilities, but you have opportunities. Yeah, that's excellent. And uh, let's just go and take a quick break. We will be right back with the remaining uh, pieces to JV's awesome mindset. How would I call them? The mindset, mindset? Seven money mindset formula. formula. And we will be right back with more on JV's seven mindset formulas. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for investing in yourself. Thank you for taking the time to learn the strategies that will help you to grow your authority and scale your impact. I am Beata Chalette. I am the growth architect. And just because you're here and you're listening to the show, I have two things that I would like to give you. Number one, for the subscribers to our podcast, we have exclusive bonus content that you can pick up at beatechalette.com forward slash bonus. And my second gift to you is a piece from our Five Star Success Blueprint, our method where we help business owners just like you, experts in their industry, to grow, build, and scale their business to multiple six figures, seven figures, and beyond. And this particular piece is called the Airtight Avatar, and that is our action guide that will help you to identify who your ideal client is in only 15 minutes. You can pick it up at airtightavatar.com. Thank you so much for listening, and now let's get back to the show. Welcome back to the Business Growth Architect Show. I am here with JV Crumb the third. We are talking about the formula he developed for the seven money mindsets, and we have covered four of them, or was it five? And now four. let's we have co- covered four so far. So let's move on to the fifth. So what's my fifth money mindset? Yeah. So let's talk about opportunity. Here's the truth: opportunities all around you at every moment. The real reason that most people are not playing at a bigger level when it comes to taking advantage of those opportunities. And by advantage, I don't mean anything um, uh, taking advantage of them in a negative way, but simply acting on them, right? Is that they don't see them. You actually have to shift your money mindset about opportunities before you start seeing them. And now you can see how each one of these money mind fits interacts with all the others. So part of you seeing opportunities is your identity. Like That's if true. you have an identity and, and, um, and I'm just doing this for comparative purposes. So let's say you have an identity that you're a, um, a janitor. Are, are you going to see opportunities to build a 42 story building? Probably not. Right. But if you have an identity that says, I am a global uh, real estate architect and builder. If you have that identity, all of a sudden you're going to start seeing different things. Now, one one might have a different skill set than another, but it's really about mindset. Oh, it's and it's I, and I'm going to just interrupt you. I want to jump in on something that I I see all the time, and that is the the hard work piece. Oh yes, yes. So opportunity. Um, you can act on opportunity in an hour, right? Or you can think that it's going to be a lot of hard work because I correct, uh, correct is the exact word, um, clients verbiage, the words they're using. And they go, oh, well, I'm going to have to work hard to get there. And I go, or you could work and have a fun, easy time getting there in the shortest amount of time possible. 
Yeah, you corrected me when I was on your event <laughs> and, and uh, I said something and then you said the better language would be that the former version of myself yes. would, have, would have said this, but that this version of myself that I am choosing to be as of right now will reformulate something else. So, so this is, I, I think you, you make an, a super important point that once you, once you step into that visionary part, because I know these principles in the formula build on each other, that and only then can you see really the opportunities because you have to do an expansion of your mindset. Um, and that is part of this formula. And suddenly you see stuff that you couldn't see before. So let's continue with the formula because we're not quite done yet. So then there's the flow money mindset and flow is really my favorite strategy to teach. It's how I live. When you get into flow and I have a, you know, a clear formula for anybody, any place, anywhere in the world, anytime you want, you can learn how you can get into flow. You literally can turn the switch on. And here's what happens. All of a sudden you're moving in the direction of the highest, the best possibilities for you and humanity and the more profitable ones, because they all fit together, of what are the opportunities? What are the resources? What are the clients? Where's the real money uh, that you're searching for? And all of that, you're moving in the direction of that, as opposed to going down a side tributary or not even knowing, you know, it's like, oh, I got to take massive action. Well, wouldn't you like to take massive action in the direction the flow is already going? You know, the direction we were talking before uh, we went to air about some of the future things that are occurring, the metaverse, the web three, but well, wouldn't, wouldn't you like to invest and build your business in alignment with these flows that are unfolding as opposed to going against them going, nope, I only want web one. I just want to write stuff, but I don't even want people to be able to interact with it. Well, good luck, but I don't think that's going to serve you too well in impacting the world and making money. When you get into flow, what naturally happens is something called synchronicity. And the easiest way to understand synchronicity is it's the events that happen that are personally meaningful for you and bring you the answers and the opportunities. So now opportunities are coming in through synchronicity. Another way to call synchronicities is they're the miracles that happen all around you. Like going, oh my gosh, that feels like a miracle. It was something I didn't in any way expect and it just shows up because here I'm in the flow. And all of a sudden I start meeting people. I start having opportunities. I start being on a show, whatever it is that takes you in the direction of making impact and money and living a life that's authentic because authenticity has a lot to do with this. And then the final money mindset. So we have all these different pieces and think of them as a circle that are all connected to each other. It's not linear. But the, the seventh one we'll talk about is the money mindset of action money side, mindset, is that you've now got to execute. So you've been building the mindsets, strategies are coming in by the interconnections between them, but now it's execution. You still have to have a clear execution, and it's a strategy and it's an action that you take in order to bring all of this together and move it forward as your mindset about who you are and what's possible and the opportunities and the abundance that's available to you is shifting and you're up leveling. So your strategies are up leveling and your execution is up leveling. And like you said, instead of you seeing execution as, oh, this is going to be hard work. I got to work all weekend. Maybe execution, you start seeing, oh, this is a couple hours worth of, of, of activity and that's all it is. It's interesting that you say that because I think that that was probably for me the big shift or one of the biggest shifts that I experienced personally when I went to uh, your event that I, first of all, on day number three, my personal experience was I was exhausted. I was so tired. I took a three hour nap. Now I nap, but I don't take three hour naps. And then I slept another 12 hours just to be on the safe side. And then what came up for me again and again and again was that I had to create the space to allow the information to come through and to receive it and then give myself enough time for the integration part of it. So can you maybe give us another like insight on what's the difference between sort of that fear of not having enough and the chasing it 
-hmm. and the stopping and letting it come to you, because I think that was one of the big things that I experienced with you. And I want to somehow share that. Sure. Absolutely. So our ego chases things because of a lack and most marketing is put together to, to, to act on that and, and accentuate the lack that people feel. I'm not good enough is really underneath all of that. And somehow I'm going to have to get to a place that I feel good. And that's the product and service you're telling people that you're providing. And, but they're living in lack and scarcity. And then when you embrace the truth that you already are somebody, that you already are a divine, beautiful human being, and that you're here with a really important purpose and that you came here with that purpose. This isn't accidental. This is all part of a grand plan of which you are in a very important part because if each of us doesn't do our part, it doesn't get complete. The puzzle requires all of us acting to blossom forth and create this new conscious world and this new conscious path of entrepreneurship. Um, so then when you start to let go of that and surrender into the flow, to use an example, you no longer are trying to become somebody because you are already one with the flow. I love that. Right? There's I nobody to become. There's only the future to manifest and you're here to help manifest that future. But you're already someone. It is not about becoming someone. You already are someone. And that's a big shift for most people because they've been trained by society. To chase. They've been trained to think of themselves in terms of what's the problem, what's missing, what's lacking, what's scarce. And I'm certainly not good enough yet. I'm going to have to go work real hard to get good enough. Maybe you just need to let go and surrender into the flow and accept you already are good enough. I like now it. It's just, it's just a matter of manifesting. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. I think part of it is how society is built in general, because that's how, how school works. It's existing information. You learn how to regurgitate it. Then you get an A. Then you go to college, it's information that exists, you regurgitate it, you get an A, then mm -hmm. you go into a job and then, you know, you do what they expect from you, then you get an A or a promotion. But I think the idea of us really stepping into accepting and acknowledging that who we are and, and saying that that, that that is enough, because otherwise I would be messing with God's creation, right? And God does not make mistakes. So, so I really like that idea about the surrender, because I think in the, in the surrender is the beauty when you stop running, you know, you, you, you can actually be found because you're not always somewhere out there looking for something. So, um, JV, how can people find out more about you find out how to sign up for an event with you to have a similar experience or an even better experience? Well, the best thing is for you to come and get an hypnotic audio. I create hypnotic empowerment audios. I want you to get this one. That'll get you on our community. So we'll communicate with you about what's coming up. But I want you to start using this. And I'm going to ask you to use it for 30 days. I'm going to tell you what it is. It's called Born to Make Millions. Now, I got to tell you, if you don't want to make any more money, this is not for you. Don't even <laughs> bother with it because it's not going to help you remain poor. It will not. It is not designed to have you live in lack and scarcity. And the real hero, when you go, well, JB, that just sounds like a bunch of money. And I don't know, because the way you were born to make millions is your purpose. And so it helps you identify how you bring that into your business, into your entrepreneurial activities, and, um, and bring that onto a path that you were indeed born to make millions. And the way to get that is to go to consciousmillionaire.com and forward slash make millions. So it's consciousmillionaire.com forward slash make millions. And then I'm going to ask you to listen to it in the morning. It's only six minutes long, but after you listen to the first minute once, you can just fast forward to that and only listen five minutes. Listen to it in the morning. Listen to it in the evening and have a journal or any way that you want to write and each day write for five minutes. And this is 
how I suggest you journal. Each sentence begins with, I was born to make millions because, and you don't have to worry about what you're going to say after each time you write that intro, something will come in. Some of them may seem like nonsense. I was born to make millions because I love pizza. Great. <laughs> right? Whatever it is, what I know will happen is over the days as you begin journaling, you may start with some surface things, but it'll go, you'll go deeper and deeper and deeper and discovering. And here's what happens after 30 days of listening to this twice a day and journaling once a day. At the end of 30 days, you will have gone through a transformational shift because you have told yourself all these reasons that you were born to make millions. So it doesn't matter if some of them sound like nonsense, they add up in your mind and you go, oh my gosh, I was born to make millions. It's time for me to do something about that because now your external world doesn't match your internal world and you're going, there's a huge gap and I don't like this gap. So I got to do something. And that gives you the motivation that it's time to choose some new mindsets and some new strategies and some new executions that are going to move you on your path of making those millions and making them by making a bigger impact with your life and business. And I think that's an excellent way for us to end the show. I thank you so much for being here and sharing your never ending wisdom, no matter how much I listen to you, I still want more. So thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing with our audience. Thank you so much. And this is it for us for today. Thank you so much for listening to the Business Growth Architect Show. I am your host, Beat Chalette. And that's it for us today. Thank you for listening and watching the Business Growth Architect Show. I enjoyed having you here. And for accountability, just take one of the strategies that you have heard, one thing that you can implement in your business immediately. Please leave comments. Don't forget to like and share this show. And if you have any questions about business, please put them in the comments. We are here for you. We're here to support you and help you to grow, build and scale your own business. For more advice, please check out our website in the show notes below. Thank you again. This is Beat Chalette, the Growth Architect. And goodbye.